during this time of year known as Lent, many of us find ourselves in a season of fasting, abstaining from various comforts or habits for the 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday. But even if Lent isn't part of your spiritual rhythm, fasting remains a timeless practice that holds immense potential for bringing us closer to God. Hey there, friend. Welcome to Beneath the Fig Tree. I'm Rose, and I'm so glad you're here, like really a lot. And can I tell you something? We all know that Bible reading and prayer are important, non-negotiable even. But I think there's so much more to a great devotional life than the, quote, perfect quiet time we've all been taught about. Around here, I want to give you permission to lay down the guilt and shame about what your devotional life looks like compared to what you think it should look like, so that you can discover how you best relate with God and can cultivate a devotional life that you love and look forward to. So I'll be sharing loads of inspiration, lots of tools and encouragement, all to help you cultivate the kind of meaningful relationship with God that you've always longed for, but you didn't know how to make happen. Are you ready to breathe new life into your devotional journey? Grab a cup of friend and let's chat. During this time of year known as Lent, many of us find ourselves in a season of fasting, abstaining from various foods or comforts or habits for the 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday. But even if Lent isn't a part of your spiritual rhythm, fasting still remains a timeless practice that holds immense potential for bringing us closer to God. You may choose to fast meals or coffee or sweets or social media or TV or any number of things. And simply abstaining from those comforts, it can help you to build self-discipline, which is definitely a valuable trait. But there's an even sweeter reward waiting if we can take it a step further to intentionally redirecting our hearts to focus on God and create space in our lives for prayer and reflection. There's an even sweeter reward waiting if we take it a step further to intentionally redirect our focus towards God and create space in our lives for prayer and reflection. By using those hunger pangs or the urges to scroll the socials or channel surf as gentle nudges to turn our hearts back to God, we open the door to a deeper, more intimate relationship with Him. So today, I want to share how this simple shift can make all the difference. Now, on day seven of the 10-day Do Something Challenge, I talked about finding simple sparks or cues that can serve as a gentle nudge for us to take a moment to just chat with God or simply point our hearts back toward Him. And if you want to go listen to that episode, I'll drop a link down in the show notes for you. The point is, fasting can be a great spark, or rather, the void that's created by the fasting. Instead of viewing them as just a mere discomfort, we can actually embrace them as prompts to connect with God throughout the day. If you're fasting coffee, I know, shudder the thought, but stay with me here. During that time that you would normally be sipping your morning brew, take a moment to pray or to read scripture. And then later during the day, anytime you feel a lack of caffeine-induced energy, once again, stop and pray. This might even be a good time to thank God for His all-sufficient grace to carry you through the rest of the day without the caffeine. If you're abstaining from a whole meal, the growling pangs in your belly can actually be the reminder to refocus on God. And in the same way, when fasting social media, the urge to mindlessly scroll can be redirected towards spiritual nourishment. So instead of reaching for our phones out of habit, we can turn to a Bible app or an online devotional for inspiration and for guidance. 
So to make your fasting experience even more meaningful and focused, ask Holy Spirit to give you a verse or a prayer focus for your fast. And again, I share about this more on days one and two of the 10 day do something challenge. I'll drop those links down in the show notes for you too. But anytime that you feel the hunger pangs of your chosen fast, read the verse or pray for whatever Holy Spirit gave you. This is where the fasting experience really starts to change your heart. And isn't that the goal? So here are a couple examples from my own fasting seasons from the last couple of years. During one fast, I chose to eat only the evening meal, and then during the morning meal, I took communion. And that's when I would read and pray through Romans 7, 15 through 8, 4, specifically in the Passion Translation. But throughout the day, whenever I felt hungry, I just revisited the passage or the prayer that Holy Spirit had put on my heart. Y'all, it was so transformative for me. And maybe we'll do an episode on that later, but wow, it was so good. And during another fasting season, I felt led to pray for a specific person with whom my relationship was filled with, honestly, some turmoil. So every rumble of the tummy reminded me to pray for that person. Okay, and I have a note of caution for you here. It's really important to remember that fasting isn't about perfection. It's about intentionality. So when we accidentally break our fast or slip up, we shouldn't beat up on ourselves. God isn't surprised or frustrated with us when we slip into our human patterns, and it isn't helpful for us to be either. So instead, we can use that as an opportunity to recognize our need for him, to humble ourselves, and to refocus and reconnect with God. Thank the Holy Spirit for gently nudging us back on track and for giving us the grace to keep pressing in to God's best for us. Again, it's not about perfection. It's about drawing closer to the one who loves us unconditionally. I've also created a scripture cultivations list for this Lenten season, and I'll drop the link in the show notes for you. And if you're new to the Fix community and you have no idea what scripture cultivations are, well, they're like a scripture reading list and a scripture writing list. Actually, they're both and they're more. (laughs) So I'll drop a link in the show notes where you can find out more about those too. So let's cultivate a devotional life you love, like really love. It is possible and it's easier than you think. Chat soon, Fix.